ओम भूर्भुव स्वह तत्सुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवश्रीम धियो यो न प्रचोदयात शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज सेकंड वीडियो ऑन स्वामी ब्रह्मानंदाज स्पिरिचुअल टीचिंग्स this video starts with the topic realization through self surrender and it was the talk given at the balur math swami bermanand says sri rama krishna used to say that a person can attain god if he possesses the intensity of this threshold love the love a devoted wife bears her husband the attraction a worldly man feels for the world and the attachment the miser has for his hoarded gold intense yearning for this kind is sure to enable one to realize god do you know what it means it means that one can reach the lord and be blessed with his vision and spiritual touch the moment the mind is cleansed of all desires and <clears throat> filled with a sincere longing for god realization the lord says in the gita sarvam dharman parichatvam mamekam sarnam vraj relinquishing all individual efforts take refuge in me alone self surrender self surrender self surrender there is the only way there is no other in this iron age kali yuga man depends too much on food and is short lived he has to do many things in this brief span of life he possesses very little of the energy strength renunciation craze and spirit of penance that are essential for god realization his mind is weak and naturally runs after enjoyment but in spite of all this god has to be realized without god realization life is vain one comes into the world and goes out of it without accomplishing anything worthy man must therefore realize god and there is no path easier than self surrender what do we understand by self surrender does it mean that we have not to do anything that we have only to sit quiet no it does not mean that the devotee has to pray constantly with a pure heart in this manner o oh lord i do not know what is good and what is bad for me i am solely dependent on the grant unto me all that i need for spiritual life take me along the path that will bring me the greatest good vouchsafe unto me the faith and strength constantly to remember thee and meditate on thee it is indeed no easy thing to dedicate oneself heart and soul to the lord many people say i have surrendered myself my all to god i am doing as he is making me do but if we observe their life we shall see that their actions are quite contrary to what they profess if they do anything good they take the credit to themselves feel highly elated over it and think oh what a great thing i have achieved but when even a slight trouble besets them they immediately throw the blame on the lord saying what a great misfortune he is bringing on me this is how most people spend life we judge men only by their exterior but god looks into their innermost mind god runs to him who prays with a sincere heart know this as certain be pure in heart 
let not your words be different from your thoughts and god will reward you according to your deserts sri ramakrishna used to say if you do one sixteenth part of the sadhana spiritual practices that i have done it is enough he has made sadhana so very easy for us but we are so indolent that we shirk our work and fail in our duty by doing so we cheat ourselves if someone gives us good things to eat we want them to be put into our mouths there are many who request me to bless them i cannot help laughing to myself when i hear them they do not do as i instruct them the moment they leave my presence they do whatever they like if i should ask any one of them whether he follows my instructions he would reply no sir i had no time to do it or weak and evil minded as i am i was not able to do it those who have no sincere desire to follow me and have no faith in me may do anything they like without asking me they will not follow my instructions and yet they want to be blessed by me they wish to attain spiritual realization without the necessary exertion by mere dozing when such people come i <coughs> while away the time in aimless talk in jesting and making fun what is the use of tiring myself by talking of spiritual practices to people who will not follow them i speak of higher matters only to a very few who i think will take my words and act on them but even then they do not follow the instructions fully and properly always accustomed to sharking work they want to attain everything without effort there is no dearth of divine grace the trouble is that men do not care to avail themselves of it they take pleasure in idle gossip only no one wants to realize the supreme truth man takes pride in talking nonsense that is how the that is how he spends his life and as he sows so he reaps teachers can be had by thousands but rare indeed is a true disciple there are many to take up the role of teachers but where are the men to hear and follow their teachings if one goes on striving for a higher life with strong faith in the words of the guru then there is an end to one's miseries he who has such faith need not run about here and there with a restless mind the lord looks to all his looks to all his wants he takes him by the hand and leads him along the right path there need be no anxiety for him who has been blessed by the lord it is given only to one in a million to cherish noble desires and sublime thoughts and of such souls as are so privileged very few can stick to their ideals to the last those persons in whose mind good thoughts have already sprung up so try their utmost to strengthen and make them permanent in order to keep up their fervor they should pray unceasingly to the almighty vouch safe unto me o lord thy grace may it be on me forever sri rama krishna used to say to all appearances the maid servant in a house looks upon all that belongs to her master as her own but in her heart of heart she knows that they do not belong to her at all so long as we live we must do our work without attachment we should know in our heart of hearts that 
This world is not our permanent home but only a temporary abode and we should direct our mind to God, the heavenly home from where we came. How many care for truth or God? Puffed up with pride, man sometimes raises himself on such a high pedestal that he totally denies even the existence of God. Everyone thinks himself infallible and his way the only way to salvation. Do you know what such a one says? We do not accept what we cannot understand. He little thinks how limited is his power of comprehension. What he thinks right today he gives up as false tomorrow. Thus his opinion changes from day to day. In making a parade of his knowledge he knows he does not care a straw for what is high and noble. The Divine Mother alone knows in how many ways man is deduded. Merely person conceives of God in his own little individual way. But our conception of the Lord should not be so limited for he is all comprehensive. <laughs> he is not perceptible to the mind and intellect that one alone can realize God's nature to whom he is pleased to reveal his mysteries and when he is realized the gates of knowledge are opened the notes of the heart are cut asunder and infinite wisdom is attained only when man realizes this state can be fully understand can he fully understand the relation between god and himself that the lord is his own and he is the lord's man cannot attain any knowledge unless the mother reveals it the mysteries of this world and the next will be revealed only when she discloses them out of her mercy. The intellect as ordinarily understood is not the real intellect. Its area, its range is very limited. Those who want to gain real bliss in this life, those who really desire to solve its intricate problems, who am I? What have I come here for? Why am I suffering from so much misery? Why does one man attain to Godhood and another remain a mere brute? Those who desire answers to these problems have one and only one duty to strive to realize God by all possible means. Life's perplexing problems will be solved the moment he is realized. Children find joy in turning round a pillar, holding on to it firmly. Do you know where their attention is fixed? It is on the pillar, for they know full, fully well that if they loosen their grip, they, they will fall down and be injured. So first of all, hold fast to the pillar of life. Then you may go on circling round it as many times as you like. There will be no fear of falling down. Our first and foremost duty in life is to realize God. Know that He is the pillar. Whatever you do, do clasping Him. Then you will not take any false step and fall. What you do will be right and will be for the good of yourself and of the world. Blessed will be your life on earth. Next topic is Divine Grace. That is ninth conversation at the Balur Mutt. Swami Brahmananda says the name of the lord purifies both the body and the mind i have taken the name of god what have i to fear 
what is there in the world to bind me i have become immortal by taking the lord's name with such a burning faith one should practice spiritual exercises what is the goal of spiritual practices it is to realize god to attain divine grace the practices are meant to clear the heart of all the impurities brought there by lust and greed unless this is done you can never reach your goal however much you may try you cannot attain god's grace nor realize him unless you purify your heart impurities have gathered in it through innumerable lives and they are to be removed sri rama krishna used to cite a beautiful illustration so long as the needle is covered with mud it is not attracted by the load stone but when the mud is washed off the needle is naturally drawn towards the load stone the load stone means here magnet similarly the dirt of the mind is washed away if one can think of the lord and meditate on him if one can cry unto him with repentance saying lord forgive me i will not do wrong in the future at once the magnet of god draws the needle of the mind divine grace flows the moment the mind becomes pure and then the realization of god takes place as a matter of course god is the son of knowledge he can be seen only when he reveals his glory to the seer in fact so long as a person cherishes a desire for worldly enjoyment he cannot have sincere yearning for the knowledge or vision of god children forget themselves when they get dolls to play with or sweets to eat but after a time the dolls lose all charm for them they want to go to the mothers such is the case with men only after they become satiated with the enjoyments of the world do they long for god then the thought of god realization becomes uppermost in their mind they are eager to hear what others have to say about god and they try to realize him in their own lives noble desires do not arise in the mind easily know this those who have them have them by the special grace of god in this world of maya man receives innumerable blows and suffer untold miseries still they do not want to change their course strangely enough they go again and again to the same place only to get blow after blow if someone gives them good counsel they feel annoyed with that person men know full well that if they put their hand into the fire it will get burned still they do it again and again not only that they invite others to do likewise if any man differs from them they call him mad and even go to the point of persecuting him do you not see how guardians try their best to raise obstacles in the way of the boy who wishes to take up the religious path to lead a sannyasin's life but they make little effort to turn back one who is leading a wild life and who may become a source of evil to himself and to his country all the objections rise only when a boy wants to live a virtuous life people try their utmost to drag him down to their own level do you know what the father of a monk once said referring to his own son he said i would have been happier had he died instead of becoming a monk there is no control over death one has to yield to it but i cannot bear to see others taking away what belongs to me this is what is called the world so full of selfishness
people lose themselves in anger the moment self interest is hurt but they have not the sense to understand that if a person is able to be a true sannyasi not only does he do good to himself but also he paves the way for the spiritual advancement of those near to him nowadays people have become so very restless they have not the patience to think seriously before acting they take up whatever comes in their way without caring to think whether or not it is likely to do them good but the mischief does not end here people turn up their children in such a way that they too have to suffer like them when they grow up everyone is born with the impressions of innumerable past lives the tendency to enjoyment is already strong and the training one gets in childhood intensifies this propensity how fortunate must they be who have escaped already or are trying to escape from the many fold dangers that threaten their spiritual life through the grace of god you have been able to give up the world be aware that you do not miss this rare opportunity of reaching your desired goal be up and doing realize god do not be heed to anything else look up to him alone he will take your whole burden then you will see that all your lower desires and cravings will leave you all together what can we know of god with our little brain nothing therefore i ask you to surrender yourself completely to him his will his will be done he is omnipotent what power has man all that you can do is to love god have intense yearning for him the whole world is mad for something why run mad after fleeting objects of this world better me be mad for god the goal is to realize god work can never be the aim of life even selfless work is not an end in itself but only a means to divine realization practice spiritual discipline and advance in the way of god then you will know that god alone is real and all else unreal that the realization of god is the ultimate goal of life you may get a little more light after a few days religious practice but do not think that you have got everything continue your discipline and move onward and onward then you will realize god you will be blessed with his vision you will be able to know him intimately hear me my boys you are all born of good families and are well educated you have had enough of such study arguments and discussion why care for more no com- <coughs> now compose your mind and fix it on god say to your mind plunge into the ocean of god you have given up the world if again you remain busy with the trash and do not dedicate yourself to god you will lose both this world and the next through the grace of the lord you have got noble thoughts and aspira- aspirations make the best use of this divine grace do not sacrifice the infinite bliss of god for the sake of the ephemeral pleasures of the world pray to the lord grant me o lord the necessary strength to overcome all the obstacles that stand in my way to you all worldly pleasures become insipid to me who gets a taste of divine bliss what is there in the world be it name or fame wealth or children nothing can bring peace to man these only add to his misery and anxiety why have you come here leaving your family and home is it to increase your burden or to lessen it 
all the objects of enjoyment that you see before you when is the moment you breathe your <clears throat> last to speak the truth they only tend to take you into greater and greater darkness do you want to treat the path of darkness or the path of light when you have one once got a glimpse of the light you should not turn your face from it do not look at the things of the world if you do so you will get lost in them so great is the influence of desires that if they once leave an impression on your mind they will drag you down lower and lower yet they will not let you feel your downward course the only way to be saved from these dangers is to offer yourself solely to god topic 10th power of renunciation at the belur math <clears throat> swami vivekananda says complete self surrender to the lord is not an easy matter the mind always creates doubts and raises such questions as this i have neither seen nor known god how is it possible for me to love and resign myself to him the natural tendency of the mind is to drag us down from higher thoughts and <clears throat> ideals to the things of the world once a certain person complained to sri ramakrishna sir i do not feel inclined to take the name of the lord what is it then that draws your mind away asked sri ramakrishna it is my ram i love it more than anything else was the reply very well said ramakrishna when you feed and serve your ram think that you are feeding and serving the lord himself do this sincerely for the for some time and you will find everything all right the guru spiritual teacher shows the discipline the path to life eternal and protects him from all troubles <clears throat> putting great faith in the words of the guru let the disciple leave them after a time he will feel that the impurities of his mind are when vanishing and divine light is making its appearance within there is no doubt that everything is achieved through faith in the perfect guru the disciple should look upon him as god incarnate on earth through constant thought and meditation on the guru the disciple is purified both in body and mind then the guru appears before the disciple and revealing the istam chosen ideal to the latter he passes out of sight it is said in the salutations to the guru guru brahma guru vishnu guru maheshwara guru par brahmam vasme shri gurave namah guru is brahma guru is vishnu guru is shiva himself verily guru is no other than the highest brahma salutations unto the guru if the disciple has a sincere faith in the guru it is easy for him to attain divine knowledge and devotion the one thing needful is faith in the guru when this is gained everything is gained realization of god is impossible without purification of the heart sri rama krishna used to say if the guru is a perfect and illumined soul the ego of the disciple is destroyed in no time but if the guru himself is unillumined then both he and his disciple have to suffer a great deal anyway the disciple is not able to get rid of his ego or the fetters that bind him to the world it is not possible for an unillumined guru to bring about the liberation of his disciple how is it possible for an ordinary man to save another from the fetters of the world 
the Lord alone who is the author of this world enchanting Maya can free man from its masses. Only the knower of God can show the way of salvation to another. But how can he who has not realized God, who has no commission for him, who has not been strengthened by divine strength, how can he free a soul from the bonds of the world? If the bind lead the bind, both are sure to come to grief. It is only after God realization that one gets the inner vision. Then only can one truly understand the difficulties of another and give him proper instruction. If a person pass if a person possesses sincere yearning for the Lord and is eager to follow the spiritual path, he is sure to find a real guru through the grace of the Lord. Therefore, a spiritual aspirant need not feel anxious about finding a guru. Those who come under the guidance of a guru who has attained realization need have no anxiety about their spiritual progress. They have been put on the right way. Now their only task is to follow it. If they meet with any trouble or make any mistake, the Lord is sure to protect them and show them the right course. Having sincere faith in the words of the Guru, let them walk along the path shown by Him that is enough. What is this world like? It is like the country hog palam containing only stone and skin but no pulp. Besides, it brings acidity and colic to the one who eats it. You are all pure young souls. Your mind is now under control, not being distracted by worldly thoughts. You can realize God easily if you strive from now on. You can fix your mind on God without much exertion so long as you are young. But it is a very hard task to bring the mind under control once it gets scattered. The Vaisan was have this beautiful saying, the Jiva has the grace of the three, the Guru, the Lord and the devotees of the Lord, but without the grace of the one it comes to utter ruin. The meaning is the disciple has received the grace of the Guru through the grace of God. He has also been imbued with noble ideals. Beside these two, he has the company of holy men. Now what is wanted is the grace of the one that is of mind. If the mind is favorable, everything is accomplished. The grace of the Others can be felt only when the mind is free from restlessness. The mind must be brought under control. Unless this is done, all strivings prove of no avail. Therefore, I warn you, my voice, beware. Your mind has not yet learned to wander. Your mind has not yet learned to wander. Before it does so, hold fast the reins. Just as the driver first trains a huge elephant and then makes it to do whatever he pleases, so also we have to train the mind in such a way that it may act according to our command. It must not be our master. The only way to train the mind is to lead it to relinquish the desire for enjoyment. The moment this is done, it becomes your slave. It is for this reason that the Bhagavad Gita and other scriptures speak again and again of the glory of renunciation. What we want is renunciation, that is the only path and they, alone, and they alone can realize the glory of renunciation whose mind has not been distracted by the things of the world. 
Sri Ramakrishna used to say, the parrot learns to repeat the words taught to it when it is young. When it grows beyond a certain age, it cannot learn anything. Then it can only cry, cow, cow. Divine thoughts lean a deep mark on the tender mind. It is only in youth that one is able to appreciate and grasp the higher ideals of life. But with the advance of age, the mind is occupied with many fold things. It becomes restless and always wants to wander. It loses steadiness and the power of sustained thinking. It is very difficult then to make any deep impression on it. How simple and strong is the faith of little boys. They believe what they hear from others and try to act accordingly. They attain success whenever they apply their undistracted mind. But when the advance of is, there is a tendency to become skeptical. As people grow older, they begin to doubt everything. At last, they teach. They reach such a stage that it becomes very hard for them to have faith in anything. Therefore, I tell you, do what you want to do now when you are young. We saw in the life of our master that he used to speak of the life of renunciation, particularly to young men. He wanted to impress on their mind the idea that God realization is the highest object of life. He knew that the young alone would be able to take up his ideal fully. Fortunately, you are all young and your mind is not tainted by worldly thoughts. Give up all desires and dedicate yourself solely to the Lord. You cannot have divine bliss and worldly enjoyments at the same time. You cannot get the one without renouncing the other. You cannot give up the lower unless you come to possess a taste for the higher. This is the proper time for you to fill your mind with the thoughts of the Lord to the fullest extent. Make Him your own. He is my all. When this idea is firmly fixed in your mind, all your troubles will come to an end. Then no one will be able to do your harm either here or hereafter. Does, does he who has tasted the syrup of sugar candy relish molasses? Worldly joys lose their flavor when one gets a taste of bliss divine. All objects of enjoyment appear to be not only insignificant but positively bitter. What I wish to say to is this, offer yourself heart and soul to the Lord and let him do with you as he pleases. 11th topic, Brahmacharya at the Balurmat, the Swamiji. <clears throat> In spiritual practices, the same rule cannot be applied to all. We must know the peculiar tendencies of each individual before any spiritual instruction can be given for his guidance. If the instruction goes against the particular bent of his nature, not only will it do no good, but it may even give rise to harmful consequences. It is therefore very essential that the Guru should study closely the individual tendencies and peculiarities of his disciples and give instructions in such a form as will readily appeal to their temperaments. Beyond one or two general rules, no individual can be told in the presence of others what particular path he should follow. I have seen in the case of Sri Ramakrishna how he would, he would take each disciple alone and give him in private the special instructions necessary for him. 
if you want to ask your guru anything regarding your sadhana you must do so in private in a general way the observance of a few rules will be beneficial to all spiritual aspirants in the first place you must have firm faith in god you must be fully convinced that if you realize god and obtain his grace all the problems of your life will be solved you will gain the object for which you have taken this birth and on getting a taste of eternal bliss you will become immortal next is brahmacharya continence without strict brahmacharya it is not possible for anyone to hold fast to great ideals to secure the full development and vitality of the body brain and mind brahmacharya is essential those who observe strict brahmacharya develop a strong memory and remarkable capacity for understanding by means of brahmacharya a special nerve is developed which brings about these wonderful powers do you know why our great teachers have laid so much emphasis upon brahmacharya it is because they knew that if a man failed in this respect everything is lost the strict brahmacharya do not lose his vitality he may not look like a pahlwan an a great athlete but the development of his brain is so fine that his capacity for grasping super sensuous things is remarkable there are certain rules which a brahmacharya must observe he must avoid ex- exciting food over sleep over exercise laziness bad company and evil conversation if you indulge in idle talk your brain gets excited you cannot control your thoughts and you suffer from sleeplessness and other troubles the control of the appetite is also essential otherwise you will be subject to many troubles sri ramakrishna used to say keep your buddhi stomach and muddi brain it means you can do effective work only if your head and stomach remain calm and cool the glutton who has no control over his appetite brings ruin on his body and mind eating too much of such foods as garlic onion or chili excites the system and one finds it extremely hard to control the mind i believe that those who want to lead a spiritual life should pay special attention to what they eat and drink it is desirable to take only nutritious and easily digested food there is no good in overloading the stomach no hard and fast rule can be laid down regarding diet with some fish and meat might agree very well while to others they may do harm every individual must find out from his own experience the food that agrees with him we should eat only in order that our body may remain fit and we may be able to realize our true nature the shastras declare sharir adam kalam dharm sadhanam health is the vital factor in spiritual practice this does not mean that one should think of his body day and night it means that one should see that the vitality of the body remains unimpaired one should eat healthy food avoiding that which ex- excited or produces lethargy Sri Ramakrishna used to say you you may eat as much as you like during the day but you must eat only sparingly at night the idea is that if you take only a little food at night your body will remain light and you can easily concentrate your mind otherwise you will have a tendency to sleep or be lazy 
would you sleep away the night or spend it in meditation daytime has many distractions and hence is unsuited for meditation but at night all <coughs> creatures go to rest and nature herself is calm and silent this is the time for aspirants to meditate on the lord in the depths of the night the mind is easily concentrated spiritual practices should not be done in public or for show <coughs> If you do them before others, they will be harmful to you. People will mock at you. They will offer you advice gratis and give you conflicting suggestions as a result of which various doubts will arise in your mind and your spiritual progress will be obstructed. The ideal sadhakas behave thus. He goes to bed at night with the mosquito curtain drawn down. Everybody thinks that he is sleeping, but as a matter of fact, he spends <coughs> the whole night in meditation lying quietly on his bed. While you are young, you must try hard to get a taste of divine bliss. When once you have got this taste, you can never forsake your sadhana. Even at the risk of your life, you will continue your spiritual practices. Those who are troubled with too much sleep in the night will do well to sleep during the day with a view to devote night to meditation. The best time for meditation is dawn even tired and midnight too often people waste this time in useless useless ways sri rama krishna never used to spend the night in sleep nor would he allow the young devotees who stayed with him to sleep long when others had gone to bed he would wake up his disciples give them definite instructions and send them to the Panchavati or the mother's temple or Shiva's temple for meditation. They would spend the whole night in sadhana as directed and take rest during the day. It was in this way that Sri Ramakrishna used to take them through various spiritual exercises. Often he used to say, Three classes of people keep awake in the night, yogis, bhogis, seekers of enjoyment and rogis, sick persons. You are all yogis, you should try to means sleep away the night. So I end this video here. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe the ch channel. Thanks a lot. Namaskar my dear friends. Next video will start with the topic Company of Holy Men and this talk was given at the Balur Mat. Thanks a lot. Namaskar my dear friends.